Hello! In this video, you're going to get a complete deep dive in how you can wire up Gatsby with Contentful CMS. Now, unlike some of the other YouTube videos out there, I'm not going to promise to do this in three seconds or some ridiculous time frame. Instead, what we're going to do is take a slower, more gentle step-by-step -step approach so you have everything you need to be able to wire everything up yourself without loads of headaches. Now, this is part two in a series on how to hook up Gatsby, Contentful and Netlify. So there's links below in the related tutorial, which links to the other episodes. Also, it's worth pointing out that all the code you're about to see is available from my GitHub. So if you want quick access to all the code you're about to see, I recommend that you clone the repo called Contentful Gatsby Netlify. Now, the final thing I want to say is that if you're interested in learning more about Contentful, I have written a book which starts at 9 and 99, all about Contentful development called Contentful, the missing manual. So go over there, check that if you want to. Otherwise, no worries. And if you haven't come across this channel before, then don't forget to smash on the subscribe button so you can carry on getting my weekly updates. Now, let's have a look at how we can wire these things together. The first question that we need to answer is how do we make Contentful and Gatsby talk together? Now, if you're working on a normal JavaScript project, something using React or maybe even Next.js, then the first thing you'd consider is using the Contentful NPM package. Now you can store this package using NPM I Contentful, and from the code snippet you can see here, we create a client, we add in our spaces, access tokens, and then we can query for the end result. Now, it is possible to use that package with Gatsby. However, it will probably be more efficient and a little bit better if you use the official Contentful Gatsby plugin called Gatsby Source Contentful. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this plugin, then you can head over to the gatsbyjs.com slash plugins directory and do a search for Gatsby Source Contentful. From here, you're going to find the page and it's got loads of information on how to use the plugin and how to install it. So for installation, it's npm install gatsby-source-contentful. After you've installed the Gatsby source contentful extension within your project, next open up your Gatsby config file. Now from here, you're going to need to make sure that you have a Gatsby source contentful option in your plugins array. Now from my entry, you can see that we've got this options object. And from here, I'm passing in my space ID and my access token. Now, just in case you missed part one of this series or you've forgotten how to get both of these settings, let's quickly switch back into Contentful and I'll show you how to get each bit of data. The first step is obviously to log into Contentful. Then you can get the space ID basically from the URL. So in the URL here, you can see they've got spaces, slash, then this seven or eight digit character, then home. You want to copy this bit here and this is your space ID. Now, in order to get the access token, on the settings menu, which is up here, you can see that we can go to API keys. Then from API keys, you want to generate a content delivery one. See, I've already created one here, but click this button otherwise. And then from here, you'll see that we've got access to, again, the space ID. But we've also got access to our content delivery API. And we can use this sweet little copy button to automatically copy it into our clipboard so we can copy it over to our project. In order for you to validate that the access token and the space ID has been added in correctly, you want to fire up your website in development. And then within the build log, you can see that you've got access to a GraphQL Explorer. After the GraphQL Explorer is loaded, we can then run a simple query just to validate that we can get data from Contentful and prove that everything's hooked up. So click on the little show GraphQL Explorer. From here, we can just do something easy like all Contentful entry. We can then select edges we can do a node, we can do a node ID, and let's just do a query. We can see that we're getting some sort of ID passed back, so it looks like everything's set up. So we have successfully configured Gatsby with Contentful, however, we've got a code smell. And this code smell is around this hard-coded space ID and access token within my gatsby.config. Now, obviously in terms of security, this is a big red flag. Having your private access details available for anyone who has access to your Git repo to see is just not ideal. Instead, what we want to do is make sure that these values aren't committed into source control whatsoever. The de facto way of making sure we don't have to hard code sensitive information within our code base is to make use of environment variables. And Gatsby is no different. 
a key aspect of using environment variables within a Gatsby project is being able to use different environment config files dependent on the environment that the application is currently running. Now, out of the box, Gatsby won't support this. However, to make your life much easier when implementing this type of functionality, you can use an additional free package, which is called .env. Now, I'm assuming most watchers have heard of .env because after all, it's downloaded something like 32 million times every single week. Now, .env is going to help us easily manage environment variables in our code. So to install it, all we need to do is an npm i.env. Now, after we've installed .env, what you want to do is configure it. So within our Gatsby-config, at the top, what you want to do is add in this snippet of JavaScript. So what this code is saying is that we need to make sure that this call is mandatory every single time that our application runs. Then we want to set the path of our environment variable based on this node environment variable. So if it's development, it's going to look for env.development. If we're running it in production, it's going to be .env.production. Now that we have this bit of code in place, when we run npm run develop, the .env is going to look for the environment variables within this file here. As you'll see, I've added in the space ID and the access token here. Then moving back to our Gatsby-config, within our Gatsby source contentful options object, I've now updated this code to use environment variables rather than those hard-coded parameters, and we're all set. We now have everything set up so we can render content created in Contentful on a page in our app simply. Now, the first thing we need to do is create an individual GraphQL query that will get content from that content item and then render it on the page. We're going to start with a very simple query, and that's querying the CMS by entry ID or the Contentful ID. So remember that open up your content tab, find the content you want in the info tab. You can copy this number here. Now, in order to create a GraphQL query, you need to understand the structure of the content model that you want to query. Going into Contentful, within the Content Model tab, you can see all of our models. So the one we created in the last video was called Homepage. And remember, it's got two properties. So it's got title and content, and content is a rich text. And we basically want to return both of these properties within our query. Now, going back to our GraphQL Explorer, if we open it up, you can see that we've got our Contentful homepage that we've created right here and then we can do a search based on the contentful id and then we want to do an equal from here we can then paste in that code and then we've got some data now what we want to do is return more than just the id so i want to return the title property and then remember we have that rich text content property now if i try and render this you'll see straight away that we've got an error and that's because the rich text field returns JSON rather than a single property. So in order to access it, what we need to do is this raw. Now it's worth pointing out that in older versions of Contentful, the property here used to be called JSON, and this is now changed to raw. Now that we have a query that works, we can copy this, add it into our Gatsby page, and start rendering some things. In order to render this content, I'm going to create a brand new page. So within my pages folder, I've created this file called landing. Now at the top of landing, I've imported a GraphQL from Gatsby. And then at the bottom, I've created myself a page query. So export const page query equals GraphQL. Tick. And then we've pasted in our GraphQL query that we've tested. And then we've got the back tick at the bottom. Now, one of the benefits of using Gatsby is it's going to magically hook up our GraphQL queries and return the data for us without us having to do anything. So let's quickly walk you through how this magic works, just so you don't get too confused. So basically, what we can see is that following this instruction here, we've imported a GraphQL from Gatsby. Now, as it mentions here, the name of that constant isn't important. So going back to our code, you can see that we've got ours, which is called page query. However, the important thing is that we've got an export, it's const, and it's using that GraphQL query. Now, the limitation is that you can only do this once per page. So what will happen is that after we've done our query, the data prop is going to be populated, and the results of that query will be added into data. So all we need to do is add in data like this when we define our components, and then we'll get access to all the variables, all the data, all the results from Contentful, and it's all available from the data object. So looking back within our code object, you can see that at the top here, 
we're passing in that data object and then we've got access to our contentful bits of data so marrying this up with our graphql query we can see that once we've got a query you can see that our top level item is called contentful homepage from here then we have title content going to our code you can see that i'm now getting the home page and then from the home page i'm getting the title then i'm getting the content and then i'm getting the raw and this is one of the main benefits of using a framework like gatsby as you'll see everything's taken care of for you all you need to do is use that query create a valid query use that data object jobs a good one. now fired up my website however things aren't ideal now we've got our title which is being displayed beautifully however that content property is a mess it's just rendering out an object now if i try to render this properly all i'm going to get is some json rather than html now in contentful when you need to render out the rich text you're going to need to install another npm package so the package that you want to install is called at contentful rich text react renderer now from here you can see that we've got a load of json and it's going to give you loads of options so you can do things like pass heading ones pass ul's pass quotes all that kind of good stuff however if you want it to simply just render out html it's got you covered now after we've installed that package what we need to do is import document to react components down at the top here you can see my import now i've still got the content that we had in the last example However, this time on page, I'm passing it into my document to React components. Now, when I save this, what should happen is that if I go back onto my page, we should then have a beautiful example with some nicely formatted HTML. So, so far, we have a pretty simple example which takes that entry ID and returns some data. However, in the real world, this is a bit useless. Now, the reason for this is that when we use websites in the real world, we basically look up things by its URL. And so far, nothing has a URL within our contentful backend. So let's change that. So going to our content model, you can see that at the bottom here, I've added in a brand new field property and it's called slug and it's of type short text. And this is basically going to allow content editors to add in dynamic URLs to associate with our bit of content. Going into the content tab with our single bit of content, you can see that I've got a slug here with test. And this is going to be the URL. So our next step is to configure Gatsby to work with dynamic URLs based on a slug. And we do that within Gatsby dash node. Now in here, you'll find a function which is create pages. Now, if you followed step one of this video where we created everything using the blog starter kit, you're going to find a bunch of stuff in here which works with markdown. So in essence, you can create some markdown files and they get automatically converted into blogs. So what we want to do is change that to work with contentful data instead. So as you'll see, you're going to have some bits like this. Basically, you want to clear it out. So basically, you have an empty create pages. Now, to keep things very simple, just for demonstration purposes, we're going to start with a static route. And then we're going to convert this into a dynamic GraphQL query in a minute. So within create pages, what we want to do is do a create page from action. Now, from here, what we want to do is do a create page. Now, this create page, we want to run for every single page that you want to convert from contentful into a page in your website. And the three main properties you want to work with here are path, the component, and the context. So the path is basically the URL that someone's going to call in order to access this page. So in this example, it's going to be blog slash test. The component is going to be the page component in Gatsby that we want to load. So you can see here I've got one which is called pages and then contentful dash post. So I've created a file within my pages folder called contentful dash post. The last bit is the context. So what we want to do is pass in the dynamic URL into our page component. And then ultimately what we want to do is using that slug, we're going to then query contentful to get information about that page. So don't worry if this sounds a bit confusing, stick with me and it will make sense soon. Taking a peek inside that contentful post, you'll see it's set up very similar to our previous example. So we've got the GraphQL imported from Gatsby. We've got our query here, which is an export const GraphQL. Then we've got our new query. So within here, we need to pass in the slug. And then from here, we need to query the contentful homepage based on the slug. So it's an equals. In this example, we're just rendering out the simple version high. Now, if we go back to our website, 
if I now type in blog dash test, this should then trigger and my template should load. And end to end, that's the process we now need to configure, but with Contentful. So going back to GraphQL, what are the queries that we need to run? So first off, we need to go to the All Contentful homepage. From here, we just need to do in edges, then we want to do node. And then all we want to do is return the content raw. We want to return our slug and the title. Run that, you can see that this is going to return every single item which gets created for our Contentful homepage. Okay, so what we need to do now is get that select all query and add it in our create pages. So nothing too special here out of the ordinary. You can see that we've got GraphQL. We're doing our query, basically just pasted that query in into a response. And then from my response, I'm doing response data, all Contentful home edges. And then for each edge node, you can see that we're now calling that create page again. And then in create pages, we're doing the same as we did last time. So we're defining the URL for that page. We're defining the component that's going to load it. And then we're going to pass in some information. The only difference is now is that we're passing in the slug, which has been created in the CMS itself. Now, if we go back into the contentful post template, I've now updated it with the same code as we had in landing. So you can see that we've got our document to react components. I'm passing in that data components. I've now got you know, the contentful homepage. I've got the title, the contents. I've then updated everything. Finally, I also updated the GraphQL query. So instead of hard coded values, we're now passing in this dynamic slug. And then slug's going to be used to query contentful for a specific page, which then gets passed into the component. And in this way, every single time someone creates a new contentful homepage inside of the CMS, it's going to automatically wire up and be available with blogs slash slug name. Finally, if we go back to our website and then add in a blog slash test the URL, you can see that our page is running with a dynamic URL. Now we have the basic setup. Let's look at another hidden gotcha. Now we're back on our homepage page. Isn't it beautiful? Now what I want to do is actually spice up my page a little bit. So let's go to embed. Let's go to assets. And then let's embed ourselves a nice little picture. So I've got a picture of a shop here. Now what I want to do is publish my change. Now if I go on here, click refresh. Hmm. What's going on there? As you can see, we've got no image. And this is the hidden gotcha. By default, the Gatsby Contentful integration won't render out embedded images like this. Instead, you'll need to customize your code a little bit in order for this to render out. So let's have a look at that. So the hidden gotcha here is that by default, document to react components will ignore any embedded images. However, we can change this by using its additional options parameter. So if you really want to learn more about it, there's a whole GitHub which goes through it. And I'll link to that in the related tour below. In essence, what you need to do within your code is open it up. So at the top, you can see that we're importing blocks from at contentful slash rich dash text dash types. Underneath here, we've defined an options object. So what we need to do is set this render node. We want to configure it with the blocks dot embedded assets. And from here, we want to generate the alt tag and the URL, create our HTML element. And this is the thing which will get rendered eventually. Now, by default, contentful will work within the en.us locale. However, if you're creating a multi-language website, you might need to customize this aspect. Now with our options object, all we need to do is pass it in as a second parameter to document to React components. And now when we go back to our web page, if I refresh the page, boom, we have a beautiful picture of an office and everything is complete. We finally made it. Hopefully you now have the information you need in order to hook up Gatsby with Contentful. It's not too complicated. However, there are a few hidden gotchas, which is good to know about before you start. Now, in the next part of this episode, we're going to look at how to push all this code into Netlify and specifically how we can configure Netlify with Gatsby and Contentful. So it's going to be a banger. If you haven't already, smash subscribe so you don't miss that one. Now, on the screen in front of me, there's a link to my video, which is Contentful, the ultimate content modeling guide. So if you want to learn more about Contentful, click on that. Otherwise, I hope you're having an amazing time wherever you are in the world. And until next Sunday, happy coding.